This is Barcelona, home to sandy beaches, stunning architecture, and one of Europe's most radical plans to transform the streets. Today, the city is facing the same problems as many others. Roads jam-packed with traffic, crowded pavements, noise, air pollution, and of course, climate change. In an effort to sort it all out, the city's iconic square blocks are now getting a 21st century makeover. Enter the Superblock. The idea is a pretty simple one. Reroute cars away from a given area and make space on the streets for people, cyclists and greenery. But we're not talking just a few blocks. With more than 500 superblocks now proposed, Barcelona wants to transform the entire city into a sort of green utopia, where every resident lives within walking distance of shops, entertainment and green space. That's no small task for the city with the highest vehicle density in Europe, but if it works, this new model could reshape cities around the world. To understand where Barcelona is going with all this, you need to get your head around where it's come from. Urban planning has long been at the heart of this city. From the Romans to the Olympic Games, construction here has always formed part of a bigger vision. But perhaps the most enduring overhaul of its design came from this guy, Ildefons Cerda. He's a pretty big deal in the history of urban planning. In the 1850s, Barcelona was plagued by dirty water, sewage, overcrowding, riots, and cholera outbreaks. At the same time, medieval walls around the city were coming down, and Sada hatched a radical plan for expansion. With the physical restrictions around the city gone, it nearly quadrupled in size, with a grid that linked the existing urban area with seven surrounding villages, creating the district now known as a Champla. Within the rigid grid, rows and rows of nearly identical blocks were constructed around octagonal intersections. Each was originally planned to contain a mix of shops, upper and lower class housing, and a central garden. It was a pretty bold idea at the time, and one that wasn't particularly well received. Even though cars weren't invented yet, the roads were designed with 45 degree corners so the drivers of horse-drawn carts and trams could navigate the streets more easily. Fast forward to today, and it turns out that design is pretty useful for cars too. While Sadar's utopian vision wasn't built exactly how he imagined, one core principle stuck. Mixed-use development. That's the idea that shops, housing, schools and parks can all exist in the same space. You create a city of mini-communities. It's pretty common in many European cities today, but some places in America generally have separate areas for retail, offices, parks and housing, and getting between them all normally means a car journey. That's all to say Barcelona has a bit of a head start when it comes to constructing a more walkable city. Its so-called superblocks or superies in Catalan have been talked about for decades, but they were officially introduced as a government-funded project back in 2013. The city picked a few neighbourhoods, began taking space away from cars, and instead prioritised pedestrians and cyclists. The idea is that streets become more than just a space where vehicles drive. They become somewhere where people can walk, cycle and relax too. In a city with just over 10% of its space dedicated to parks and gardens, you've got to make space where you can find it. And Barcelona already has some of the worst air quality in Europe. Less vehicles on the road means less pollution. Now, cars aren't completely banned from superblocks. Certain vehicles can use the roads to do things like access residences, make deliveries and provide public transit. And emergency services, of course, get priority. But the blocks operate a one-way system with a speed limit of 10 km per hour. Studies of the first trials from back in 2014 found that pedestrian trips went up by 10% and cycling by 30%. The goal is to have roughly 80% of all journeys by foot, bike or public transport come 2024. So far, these blocks have been relatively sporadic across the city, with just a few areas serving as sort of test cases. But starting in the summer of 2022, the city plans to use $45 million to transform a third of the streets in Aixampla, the same part of Barcelona that was originally designed by Sadar. Here's how it'll work. The original superblocks in 2016 took over nine city blocks, around 400 by 400 meters in size. Through traffic was rerouted along the perimeters, and any necessary car traffic was limited to one narrow lane, with pedestrians having the right of way. 
The latest plan is to create a sort of super superblock, spanning 21 streets with 21 new pedestrian plazas at specific intersections. That'll create more than 35 hectares of pedestrian space and some 6 hectares of new green space. But since this isn't a simple 9x9 square, rerouting traffic is going to be a lot more complicated. To navigate that, the city can use digital tools like geospatial data to model existing traffic patterns and air quality before starting construction. Once work starts, there are a few main things to do. First is to even out the curbs on the road and make the streets accessible. The existing asphalt will be removed and replaced with traditional panelled paving stones and granite alternatives in its place. The new surface is designed to be permeable and will have a system to collect and reuse rainwater. Finally, benches, tables and chairs, play areas, water fountains and trees are going to be added to encourage people to spend more time outside. Now, this isn't a magic bullet. Barcelona has a lot of things that make building superblocks here easier than elsewhere, but it's not perfect. This idea alone isn't enough to eliminate the need for cars. There are roughly 800,000 people who commute into the city to work, and a lot of them drive. To complicate things further, not all locals think the superblocks are so super. In Pobla New, residents protested against their own new block in 2017, saying it forced them to take long and convoluted routes to get home. But proponents of the project say that's sort of the point, to make options like walking and cycling more convenient than driving. Of course, there's always the risk that by making an area more desirable, real estate prices will go up, and some of the current residents might be priced out, or it'll be transformed to prioritise retail shops for tourists. To combat that, city officials will need to implement housing policy that protects locals alongside the construction upgrades. Despite the challenges, Barcelona's plan is a bold shift in how we use our urban spaces, and a reminder that it doesn't always take a multi-billion dollar mega project for construction to have a huge impact on our lives. If the city's vision proves successful, then what's happening here today might serve as a whole new model for the cities of tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about where construction is headed, make sure you subscribe to Tomorrow's Build.